In the Legends Pinball 4K Unboxing and Assembly Setup video Part 1, we fully assembled the machine. If you missed it, I'll place a link up above and in the video description below where you can go check it out. You'll definitely want to start there. In this video, we'll go through everything you can expect after flipping the power switch on for the first time. That is, going through the setup wizard, connecting up to your network, setting up your Legends ID, navigating the new CE4K UI, as well as some settings that I think you'll find helpful. Keep in mind, while the machine shown here is the Adams family, the steps will be the same regardless of the Legends Pinball 4K or FX Legends 4K machine you may own. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. When you first power on your Legends Pinball 4K machine, you'll see a brief intro. Once it completes, you'll be greeted with the welcome dialog. This setup wizard will step you through getting your machine up and running. Scroll down to the bottom by holding the D-pad. Once at the bottom, press the play button on the front of the cabinet to continue and accept the privacy policy. If you'll be using a wired LAN or Ethernet cable, Go ahead and plug it in now. Once done, click the Continue button. However, we'll use Wi-Fi in this case and select Set Up Wi-Fi. The machine will search for all available Wi-Fi networks and display a list. If yours doesn't appear immediately, eh, just give it a few more moments. Now select your Wi-Fi network name using the D-pad and then press the Play button to select it. You'll then select enter Wi-Fi password, and using the D-pad and the play button, enter the password for your network. Once done, select done. Now select connect to connect to your network. Once connected, you should see a connection successful message. Just select back and then back again. Move down to continue and select that option. We'll now assign our time zone by selecting Setup Time Zone. Then select Time Zone. Select your location. I'm in the US, so I'll select that. And I happen to be in the Central Time Zone, so I'll now select that option and Confirm. If you prefer a 24-hour clock, you can change that here, but I'll leave it as a 12-hour clock and select Back, and then select Continue. You will need a Legends ID, which is an account you create with Ad Games. There's no need to enter a credit card, but we do, at a minimum, need an account. This will allow us to upload our high scores to the leaderboard, download additional purchase tables, and much more. Just click the Set Up Account button. If you already have a Legends ID that you use with another Ad Games Legends device, you can select Sign In with Legends ID. But let's assume that this is your first Legends product for now. We'll select Create Legends ID. From here, you can create your own Legends ID. Alphanumeric and a few special characters can be used. I recommend keeping it easy to remember. Then also enter the email and your password twice. Once done, select the Submit button. If you don't see the account creation email immediately, check your spam folder. I created an account for this video and found it in my junk email, <laughs> so be sure to check there. In the confirmation email, you can either enter the code directly on the machine or simply click the Confirm My Legends Account link. Then the Confirm Your Account button. Back on the machine, you can now simply select Sign In with Legends ID, enter your Legends ID, password, and select Sign In. Once logged in, select back. From here, if you want to change your avatar, you can. I'll set it to a blue skull, then confirm, and back, and back again, and then select continue. FDX is flash drive X. This is simply a method of increasing the available storage on your machine by plugging in a USB stick. We'll just click continue for now, but we'll talk a little bit more about this later. That's it, we're done with the setup wizard. Next, we'll perform the day one update.
We'll now discuss the Day 1 update. After completing the setup wizard, you'll see this dialog indicating a firmware update is available. The firmware update process will take around 15 minutes in total. Press the start or play button to begin the update. The update download will then begin. Once everything has been downloaded, the machine will automatically reboot. The new firmware will then get applied and it may take about another 7 minutes or so. Once done, you can press the play button again to reboot or wait for the timer to expire. You'll see the startup video again. The machine will then search for components to update. If an update is found, press the play button to perform the component update. Once done, press the play button again to restart the machine. You'll now notice a new intro video. Once it plays, the screen will remain black for a while. Just be patient here. You'll then see loading, and the day one update has now been successfully applied. After a brief delay, a promotion for ArcadeNet standard plan will appear. ArcadeNet is beyond the scope of this video, so we'll just select Remind Me Later for now. However, I will place a link below with more information. In the next section, we'll discuss the UI navigation and some settings that you may want to adjust for a better experience. Now we'll take a look at navigating the machine. After all the updates have been applied, you'll start out on game number one, which in this case is Amazonia. It's a great table, one of my personal favorites. Depending on the cabinet you have, there may be more than 15 tables pre-installed, so it may look a little different than what you see here. However, I want to provide you with some basic tips for navigating the machine. If you press the flipper to the left or right, the game selection will move in the direction you press. When it does, you'll hear the solenoids firing. Some are going to like that, at least initially, but you may eventually want to turn that off, and I'll show you how to do that in just a few moments. You can also use the D-pad, or the optional arcade control panel, to navigate the tables, and this, of course, won't fire the solenoids. Until you've memorized what all the buttons do, know that help is on the screen for you. Here we can see how to select an option or table, the previous or next game, marking a game as a favorite, and a quick search. On the right hand side you'll see how to filter what you want to see, such as using the d-pad up or down, filter selection with the forward nudge, filtering back a level, or the notification menu. Let's take a closer look at that, it's important to understand how it works. Let's say you're at the All Games category, and want to filter the tables in the list. Just press the Forward Nudge button. Now if you press the D-pad up or down, you can navigate the subcategories, which in this case is Pinball Games. In the future, we may see other categories at this level. Now just press the Forward Nudge button again to filter further. Now we can see a category for Magic Pixel or Zen Studios tables. If I move up to Magic Pixel, I only see Magic Pixel tables above. The same is true for Zen Studios. To go back up a level, just press the Rewind button, and again to go to the top level menu. While we're discussing the navigation, to launch a game, just press the Play or Start button to load the table. Then again, once the table loads, to start the game. Pull back on the plunger, release, and have some fun! In addition to the list view that we've been looking at, you also have the option for a tiled view under UI settings. We won't delve into too much detail on that, but before we discuss the settings, I want to make you aware if you visit the settings section of the guide, located at wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash ALP 4K, you'll find all the settings documented there. To keep this video focused, in the next segment, we'll take a look at some settings that I think you'll find particularly helpful. Next, we'll check out some important settings that you may find helpful. The first setting we'll take a look at is Flash Drive X. 
Move up on the D-pad from the All Games category and you'll enter the Settings menu. We've already discussed the navigation in the previous section, so we'll just move to the right to FDX and press the play button. Now this is totally optional, but you can increase the amount of storage on your Legends Pinball 4K machine by adding a USB flash drive. The reason why you may want to consider it is when I downloaded and installed Peanut Snoopy Pinball, it used about 608 megabytes. That doesn't seem like much, but the amount of storage needed for additional pinball tables may vary. For example, after applying all the current updates, the available internal storage was around 37 gigabytes. And more are indeed coming, this number will be reduced. I would guesstimate around 65 tables can be added to the machine before you'll need to consider using Flash Drive X to expand the storage. But again, that's just a guess. It's not something you'll need to rush out and do right now, but wanted to make you aware of it. I prefer to use these Samsung 256 gigabyte drives on all my Legends machines. I've never had an issue with them. To increase the available storage, just take your USB stick and plug it into the blue USB 3.0 port on the back of the machine. Then within Flash Drive X, select Format and Yes. This will erase everything on the USB stick and mount it. Then just select Back and Back again. When installing new tables, you'll then see an option to install the tables to the FDX USB drive or the internal storage. If you don't want the solenoids to fire while navigating using the flipper buttons, I mentioned earlier you can turn that off. To do that, go into the haptic feedback option, then the very first option to enable or disable haptic feedback everywhere, use the D-pad and set it to disabled off. Now when you navigate with the flippers, the solenoids won't fire. Let's say it's late at night and you don't want to wake others while playing. You can also set solenoid firing to disabled off and that'll turn them off completely. There are a number of useful options in UI settings, but the main one I want to demonstrate in this video is the screen brightness. If you find the displays too bright or not bright enough, there are a number of ways you can change it. Select Screen Brightness, and then from there you'll find several presets, including Low, Medium, and High. Using the presets, it will change the brightness level of all three displays. There is another called Custom. Using this option, you can adjust the brightness of the playfield, the back glass, and the DMD independently and in 5% increments. In case you weren't already aware, haptics also include the vibration that you feel on the front of the machine and is provided by two small speakers located under the apron. This provides vibration in addition to the solenoids and it's something that you'll feel during gameplay. If the vibration is too strong or not strong enough, you can easily change that. Press the volume up or down button, then quickly press the channel button to toggle the haptic slider. Then press and hold the volume up or down to increase or decrease the haptic vibration to your preference. That brings us to the end of another video. We covered quite a bit, including the initial setup, the day one update, how to navigate the machine, and various settings that I think you'll find helpful. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by clicking the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, including a video of the upcoming Peanut Snoopy Pinball in 4K, well, click the subscribe button. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon. A friendship like ours is worth all the money in the world.